Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of A Gem of a Secret Podcast. My name is Donatella, my secrets. My name is Coco Gem Holiday. Hey Coco, how are you doing tonight? Um, I'm feeling real shwasty. Actually, not really, but... <laughs> <laughs> so, tonight I'm drinking Crook Marker. Oh, this is what you were drinking during our bonus episode. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Yeah, they're good. Sp- spiked and sparkling blackberry lime. It is actually super good. Yeah, I'm uh, having a boxed cab sob, so not as good, but it works. <laughs> we're, we're classy, apparently. Yeah. It, it does the job. <laughs> Gosh. Oh, good deal. Um, so, um, this week we're going to talk about the stimulus checks. We're going to talk about just different things that are kind of happening with uh, quarantine. We're going to talk about... A little bit of our lives. We're going to talk about some current events, just current predicaments that our world is facing right now. We're facing our reality and we are reporting on it as it happens. We don't know what we're going to expect week to week. We don't know if all of a sudden we're going to start getting uh, letters from from owls, you know, and we're going to start having to go to our our, our wizarding school. Oh, I'm a Pukwudgie okay, so... here in North America, so I'm sure that'll happen I soon, right? I right? derailed into I don't Harry know. Potter. I'm just going into, like, what's the best case scenario? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't want to think about Hunger Games. I wanted to think about Harry Potter instead. Oh, but the outfits in Hunger Games. Oh, the outfits. Yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> I mean, technically, we left the strongest district by moving from Colorado. Did you realize that the capital is where it happened in Colorado, like Denver? Really? Yeah. The capital was in, like, Colorado. Oh, I did not yeah. know that. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. It was like <laughs> Colorado world. and Wyoming. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So I don't, I think we'd probably technically be in like the lumber district. Oh, I said you're going to be like, we're in district 12. I'm pretty sure we're like the worst <laughs> district actually now. <laughs> we love living in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Don't cancel us on the internet because that's something that'll happen Actually, here. I don't know. I technically, if anyone does know where Oregon would lie in the Hunger Game districts, let us know in the comments. Let it, yeah, please know. let us know in the comments. Yeah. Also, funny story is, so one of my coworkers lives has lived in Oregon his entire life, and he said to me, because I made a passive aggressive comment, and he's like, "Oh, so you're finally learning what it's like to live in Oregon." <laughs> he's like, "So Oregon is all about passive aggressive comments." Yeah, and yeah. I was like, "Oh, that's fair." That's I mean, it fair. is. <laughs> So is it? So is I'm not passive aggressive. I'm just aggressive aggressive. Yeah, Donatella scares people when she moved here because <laughs> she said I. She, somebody said a passive aggressive passive aggressive commentary. She's like, I will fight you. <laughs> it's my most common saying, and a lot of the time I mean it in jest, but also a lot of the time it's just a reaction. My first thing is to say I will fight you. So don't be threatened or do. The choice is yours. I love how you're going to make all the viewers, sorry, viewers, the listeners confused. <laughs> I'm an Aries. I'm sensitive <laughs> and I'm also kind of confrontational on occasion. It's crazy how the amount of people in Portland actually care about Zodiac. Zodiac signs. It's, you're like, wow. <laughs> They're like, Coco, what's your moon sign? I had a guy flat out not talk to me because of my Zodiac sign. <laughs> well, I, Aries are crazy girl. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> But yeah, I like, <laughs> I t- we like compared na- uh, birth charts and then he was like, oh, it's not good. And I- and then he stopped talking to me afterwards. That is the most Portland thing I've ever heard. <laughs> we compared birth charts and like, he wasn't interested. He wasn't. He wasn't. <laughs> God, that's dumb. <laughs> okay. So let's go on to this, uh, this coin that we're supposed to be getting from our government. Um, <laughs> This coin. <laughs> this coin. Oh, apparently, cabbage is not a term that they use here often. Every no. time I say it, they get really confused. They're like, ca- like, uh, like organic. <laughs> organic, organic or from the grocery? <laughs> you what know, are you talking. Why are you hungry? <laughs> pesticide free cabbage. I hope you're talking about pesticide free cabbage. <laughs> um, no. Oh, we're dumb. <laughs> uh, green. Dinero. Uh, the bills, the lettuce. Um, um, the things that'll help me have food on my table. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, 
So the government basically, um, anyone listening to this makes under 75000 a year. So uh-huh. you're getting a check I for am. roughly $1,200 from the yeah. government if you filed your taxes in 2019 or 2018. Do you have your direct deposit information with yes, the government? Yes, I Me do. too. Me too. So um, we'll be getting it hopefully within this month. They hopefully. said um, roughly around, the last numbers I heard was roughly around the 16th of April for direct deposit people. And, you know during that time but you know all this information i don't want to give misinformation we i have direct deposit so does donatella so well the fact we'll of the see. matter is that our president could president could say that it's april 16th or whatever we're getting it and that could be misinformation in itself sure it's could be. it's a very weird world that we're living in where we have to start listening and paying attention to our state governments and to the medical professionals that are talking over the people that are supposed to be running our country because we are getting vast amounts of misinformation. Yeah, and the, this time. the sad part about this is is um the media so I know that the media is biased, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But like the media is very biased. And the reason I knew this is cuz like I was super for cuz I don't mind talking about politics. I was super for um Elizabeth Warren and Bernie and whatever, but like so listening when it was getting close to when you know because now it's bernie and joe mm-hmm. the thing is when it was getting close to time when everybody was going to drop out for that before that last elect uh last debate uh the media was just the words they would use were so impactful towards yeah. joe biden and like it was just like they didn't even mention things about elizabeth elizabeth warren they didn't say how she did in the polls like they just like pretended like she didn't even exist mm-hmm. like the erasure was serious and mm-hmm. i was like wow Mm -hmm. it's like this is what they're talking about for biased reporting and so even with the stimulus checks because like i listen to the news every morning and literally what's happening is like they kind of gloss over it like they do because like i guess it's not positive news that you know americans will be able to pay their rent well and i saw something too it's where basically canada stimulus is where it's like and and i don't want to say the exact amount because i could be wrong but basically canada stimulus the citizens there are getting a lot more than American citizens are, and it's not just one payment of twelve hundred; it's multiple payments for Canadian citizens. Yeah. Um, well, th- remember your rent stops after this month. Oh, and all of your bills. Um, yeah. So you get the check, you pay off your bills, and then you're good until the pandemic is over. Yeah. Yeah. So um, <laughs> it there was basically a post, a viral post that I saw that said, I mean, and it's it's true; it's nothing that we didn't already know. It's that. Uh, proof of the way that the stimulus have been presented for both Canada and the U.S. It shows that Canada values its citizens while the U.S. values its corporations because there's been more money allocated for bailouts than there have been for people who can barely pay for their health care expenses. Yeah. Um, And it's just a very sad, unfortunate reality. And I think the biggest thing that we can get from this coming out of it is that the system's broken. We need to change things. And we're not a political podcast, but God damn it, if I need to get political right now, I will. This isn't working. It isn't working. And just to let everybody know, me and Donna are very politically aware. We are. Um, it's like we watch debates. We listen to the news. Like we know what's going on in our country. We try to get as much correct information as we can. And there's so much misinformation out there. Not alternative facts. It's not a thing. Um, never has been a thing. No. But it's so even when it like because the, the fact of the matter is and we can talk about it. The one thing we can talk about is anecdotal information. And the fact is my rent payment alone, my portion of my rent payment payment um will be pretty much almost like a quarter of the stimulus check and then all the rest of my bills um that are not going away will be the rest of mine will be probably over 50 percent of the stimulus check will be going towards rent honestly because a lot of the money that i'm making right now my hours have been cut from my content moderator job from my at-home job so my stimulus check is going right into my landlord's pockets and that's just that's just the reality of it um, right. And then and I love that system, that ambiguous, because um, Portland does have a thing that they did where um, your landlord cannot, so they can't stop rent in, in Oregon. They said that. 
Mm-hmm. They can't stop rent, but they said that they can keep your landlords from evicting you. Mm-hmm. And but what does that mean though? Does that mean yeah, that a month from time, now yeah. or two months from now, when like the economy starts getting well, not back together, it's going to be a horrible recession. But like yeah. when the economy gets back on track, is it your landlord going to be like, oh, by the way, those three months of rent you didn't pay where I was trying to evict you, but I couldn't. You owe me all of that now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, and the, how are you going to catch up? You know. After after being back at work, you spent all of your stimulus check on making up for what rent you can. And food. And food. <laughs> because let's face it, we're all, you know, we're all hurting. Like, it really is. I mean, it's, it's scary. And I guess this does transition into the next topic is, like, we are in kind of a bit of a wartime mindset right now. Yeah. Um, the CDC just announced today that they're encouraging that Americans, while they're out, wear cloth masks. Um, so that means while we're out and about, even just going for walks, we need to be taking those extra precautions. Uh, how do we feel about this being part of our new normal? So on my side of it is, um, so I went to Winco, um, by the way, we don't have those in Colorado. They're kind of like just grocery stores. Mm -hmm. Um, so I went to Winco and, uh, Probably like 50% of the people that were there actually had cloth masks on. Mm. This is before today. Mm. This is, I went two days ago. And, and I didn't think that it was silly or anything, but what I thought was for me to wear a mask out in public and then going to Winco, because all the grocery stores are just busy. The grocery stores don't even seem like they lost business. They're Mm -hmm. super busy all the time. And like, I just don't feel like that would be enough. Mm-hmm. Like, so when I go out to, like, go grocery shop- shopping, I try to social distance. I do walk around people. But the other thing that I do is I try to, I actively don't touch my face. Um, and then when I leave the grocery store, I go to the bathroom and I wash my hands um, very diligently because that makes me feel safer. Because also you have to remember, like, we have the shopping carts that everybody uses. And Winco, they have a rag to wipe down the shopping carts, but it doesn't have any kind of, like... Um, hand sanitizer kind of stuff on it like it, mm-hmm. it's just a cloth i don't know why they have that yeah <laughs> so. i mean i think it's definitely something it's going to be a precaution that from now on when i go out i take especially when i'm going out to the grocery store i think i probably am going to end up wearing a mask before i go out this next time and i think it's something that if you do have any bit of sewing skills that you should do to help out your friends that don't otherwise have those sewing skills and you can even get creative with it you know choose some of your favorite scrap fabrics use some old t-shirts to fashion a cloth mask you know look at patterns online get creative with it it's something that you can do that not only helps with self-expression but it helps with the current global pandemic make masks for your friends gift them you know uh via mail if you have to because we're still doing the social distancing thing you know or drop it off at their doorstep and you know whatever you have to do do your part to help out in the middle of this um I think after this episode, I want to have my own mask made, and I think everyone in our house will do that. So we'll post ours, and then we want to see pictures of, you know, what you guys are putting together, if you if you have any, or, um, you know, just what your, your thoughts are on this new normal that we're adjusting to as this pandemic increases. We're at the point right now to where we could see upwards of anywhere between 100 and 200,000 deaths um, from this virus by the end of this month. Right. That's um, a projection that was put out there. Obviously, things change day by day. Uh So everyone be safe. I mean, truly be safe. Social distancing is proven to work. That Mm -hmm. thing, we can say that it has proven to work. And so just make sure that you're washing your hands, you're keeping your distance, if you feel sick, um, I know a lot of people actually at this point who have recovered from COVID-19 mm-hmm. um, because they social distance and they, you know, they sleep, they rest, they treat it like a flu yeah, and they've recovered. Um, and so just keep that in mind. And then and just be keep aware. in mind that there is a serious concern that people who have no symptoms at all are potentially spreading the right. virus. So, you right. know, that's just stay home when you can and then take the necessary precautions. And that's, that's where we're at. We're... As, as these weeks go on, we're going to be developing new normals as this happens. And we're going to kind of just be updating and talking about them. And that's just the reality of the situation right now. Yeah. So um, I am going to... So definitely we are going to have our masks that we're creating 
online um, on our website. And what's our website, Donatella? Our website is a gem of a secret podcast.com. Again, you can find all of our content, including picture references and video references to what we're talking about at a gem of a secret podcast.com. Mobile friendly. Um, so moving on from that. So we're going to talk about a little bit about we're going to get it back on topic for our drag stuff. Um, so Donna, let's start with you. What has changed for you or what is this quarantining doing for you for your drag? Um, as far as my drag goes, it's giving me the opportunity to get more creative with makeup. I am able to, when I have extra time throughout the day, go and play with what I have down in my makeup station and just kind of let my imagination run wild. And it's given me the opportunity to reinvent myself in some ways. And I'm excited to see where my drag goes after quarantine. I don't know how long that's going to be or where it's going to be at, you know, by the time it ends. But this is something that is actually giving me the opportunity to focus on my creative talents. And also, it's kind of been a remedy for the burnout that I experienced while I was here. Um, So in ways, quarantine has helped me take a step back, and I think it's forced me to take a step back that I really needed to do, uh, take a step back with. Uh, I said in March I wanted to take a break before any of this ever happened, and uh, we're all kind of under a forced break at this point. So it's interesting that, uh, you know, I'm able to kind of sit back and reflect now and have some time, but I feel like quarantine is definitely helped me get a bit more creative as far as my drag goes. What about with you? Where are you at? So um, I watched the Drama Camp Live. I'm on cast at Drama Camp, and I decided not to participate in the Drama Camp Live. It's specifically because I am very busy Mm -hmm. with my 40 hours. I talked to Diana Fire today, actually. um, Sorry, at the time of recording this, about how... Like, because she's also working full time, but she works remotely. Yeah. So it's a different animal for her, um, you know, to to like get into drag and do things like that. And specifically for me, it's like I wanted to take a break so bad. March, April and May were going to be my break month anyway. And Mm -hmm. so after watching that, I feel inspired and I want to get into makeup and I want to perform. And me and Donatella might do something. But as of right now, it was one of those things of where I don't feel inspired um, for a new thing. Mm-hmm. But I do want to grow my craft. I want to grow my drag. I I got into drag recently to film a thing for Camp Wanakiki. And uh, my makeup came out correctly. Mm-hmm. And I've been trying this new makeup style for a while. And it wasn't coming out correctly. And it finally did. And I think it's because I was just... You doing had the time. it i had the time yeah and like it wasn't could, rushing before a show yeah and i could blend it the way that i wanted to and i felt beautiful and gorgeous and stuff like that so i'll post that look too and i think on our a gem of secret podcast.com website we're gonna post um donatella's uh, zodiac looks there as well so you all can see what's happening with those yeah cool um, yeah so uh, that's kind of where my growth kind of sat awesome yeah um it's definitely it's definitely something that's been a change for all of us. I, I feel like we've seen a lot of artists emerge and kind of uh, actually flourish in this sort of digital age of drag right now where they haven't really gotten to, especially if they're if they're someone who focuses a lot on aesthetic and looks, um, they may not be always comfortable going out to, let's say, you know, one of the more popular like drag events like uh, pre-pump or uh, superstar divas in performing so they're kind of taking their art to the digital realm and it's it's given the opportunity for a whole new crop of queens to flourish and show showcase their art which I think is neat yeah it's it's been really fascinating to see people um, well one try to get their coin the way they want to mm-hmm. but just the different mediums that yeah. people are trying it's Someone that I have been extremely impressed by lately is uh, Ruby Delish. You can follow her on Instagram at R-U-B-Y-D-E-L-I-S-H. You could also find her on TikTok. She has some really cool uh, TikToks of uh, her makeup abilities and whatnot on there. Uh, but she is a queen and entertainer that I, um, I've only worked with like once, I think, at a show. 
Uh, but I've seen her showcase her art on multiple platforms and she's just extremely talented and I feel like she deserves more praise than uh, what she's getting. So please check out her art. She has a lot of really cool looks. She's trying new things during this quarantine. Um, I would really appreciate it if all of our listeners uh, went and checked her out. Yeah. So one of the things I wanted to talk about um, for this for this episode was... So when I moved to Portland, uh, it was... I moved to Portland because I wanted to be in a bigger city, a bigger drag scene, a bigger everything. I just wanted there to be people and experiences and things like that. And this has been such an interesting, like, transition, obviously, with it being quarantine. Um, we're not at a shelter in place in Oregon. That's not quite what we're at, but like, it's, it's pretty darn close. And so since I'm an essential worker, I still leave the house and I see what's going on out there and everything is dead. Everything is empty. Everything is closed. And it's it's eerie. So it's eerie. It's like a ghost town. Mm -hmm. There are roughly more than two point, a little over 2.1 million people that live in the city of Portland. And it's dead out there like even when i drive to work i probably see a max of like maybe like 90 other cars on the road Mm -hmm. like but like when normally i was seeing back to back what are rush hours like now oh there's not a rush hour (laughs) there's there's not like there's there's, no rush hours yeah it's so crazy just being out there and i kind of want to i do want to drive downtown but the thing about like the almost shelter in place is there's kind of no reason for anyone to ever be downtown. Yeah. So I'm afraid of getting pulled over, but I'd like to see what it looks like. Yeah. Um, yeah, we haven't been downtown since everything. Honestly, it's it's so weird and it's just strange living in these four walls and um you know, four walls and multiple floors because what so are we? Many floors. We're so we're so rich. We're so, <laughs> so rich. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, we is. live in a house that was built in 1904. Um, it's very eclectic and fun, but uh, I have gone a little bit stir crazy. It's a good thing that this house isn't haunted. I'm surprised it's not with as many years as it's been around because Truth. I would be socializing and making friends with the ghosts if that were the case. And uh, I'd be end up in an insane asylum at this point. If, gosh, if gosh Rebecca. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, no, it's it's interesting now that we're spending a lot more time um, in our houses. And when we go out, I actually, I was, I was going on a walk today and, like, walked by maybe two people the entire time. And I was out, I would say, for probably, like, a solid hour at least. Um, and I only saw two people. And one of them was wearing a mask. And interesting. it was just... I think a true sign of what we're going through. And that's, I mean, get out and exercise and get your sunshine when you can. Like, it's really important for your mental health that you get out and do that. And I'm a big advocate in that. But also make sure that you're staying safe. It's something that I'm doing. Um, You can go out and get your exercise without having to endanger other people. And even if you're going out and you're hiking on some more secluded trails or doing something like that, Do something that feeds your soul right now because heaven knows we all fucking need it. We need it so bad right now Um, because this uh, being cooped up in your house, it's it's not something that um, that is really positive. And, you know, like this lack of human interaction for I think a lot of people is something that is a little bit depressing, especially for me as a single person. And I think that's maybe something we could talk about in another podcast is being single during, what does dating during quarantine mean? Ooh, that'll be a good one. You know? Yeah. Um, so as we approach our 25 minute mark, um, Donna Cardi already said hers, but we were always going to do the feed the positive. Yes. I said my feed the positive. So Coco, who is your feed the positive? Yeah, so my hashtag feed the positive is going to be Rogue Storm Safari this this episode. So Rogue is um, the first show I actually ever performed in when I moved, sorry, when I visited Portland. And actually it was Black Magic. And I talked about Black Magic on an earlier an epi- in an earlier episode. So yeah, please go listen to all of our podcasts. Um, <laughs> but Rogue is the producer of Black Magic and she has become a very dear friend of mine is 
interesting of a character that Rogue is, what really I admire about her is her dedication to the professionalism of the craft. She has such a de demeanor about her. Like I said, I was watching the Drama Camp Live and Rogue's number, she did Demi's song. Actually, I don't actually know what the name of that song is. The one she performed. I Love Me. Or, uh, yeah. I'm listening. Oh, I'm... oh, oh, that one. Um, I, yeah, because I, I did not tune in for all of the performances tonight, unfortunately. But it's such a good song, and Rogue just turned the party super effing hard. And I just was living for everything that she was giving to us. On top of the fact of, like, just hanging out with Rogue is always just a really beautiful pleasure. And her partner, B, which I call Honey mm -hmm. B, um, is a wonderful, wonderful human being. And I just absolutely... Oh, B is so great. B is great. Oh. That was, <laughs> that was not the song. <laughs> I was trying to find uh, look up the song that uh, Coco is referring to. But yeah, it's, I'm it's not... so solid. Um, but I think it's called Anyone. Oh, Anyone. Yes, yeah. it's called Anyone. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Anyone was absolutely fantastic and Rogue did a beautiful job. C kudos to the entire cast of Drama Camp. Um, yeah, I'll post a link to the full video on the website at a gem of a secret podcast com. And if you haven't realized, Gem is always spelled with J E M. Um, gem, like gem in the holograms. Gem in the holograms. Yeah. Oh, and before we forget, Donatella, we did have a contest winner yeah. from last week. Yes, we did. Uh, we have a winner of a merch item. I believe we said a hoodie. Yeah, I think it's going to be a hoodie. Yeah. Hoodies are warm, right? Yeah, exactly. And everyone needs a hoodie during the summer. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you live in Arizona, like our winner, Tammy. Yay! Everyone, let's give it up for Tammy. Tammy has been a longtime supporter of Coco and myself, um, as well as many of the girls that started out in the scene that we started out in. Uh, we love you. Thank you for participating and thank you for listening. We miss you. Yeah, and we'll get your contact information in whatever channel I deem necessary. And yeah. <laughs> we'll just go from there. Exactly, exactly. So um, I guess that it concludes our episode. Yeah, yeah. This was another fun edition of A Gem of a Secret podcast. My name is Donatella My Secrets. You can find me at Donatella underscore My Secrets on Instagram and I recently got on TikTok. You can follow me as uh, Donatella My Secrets, just all one word on TikTok. Um, so do that. Yeah, and you can follow me, Coco Gem Holiday, on Instagram at, at Coco Gem Holiday. Gem, Gem is spelled J E M, like I said. And then also you can follow me on TikTok too. I have yeah. one video, or what is it called? A talk or a tick? Or I don't a, know what it a, is. It's a posting. I don't. I don't know. You can follow me there. I have one. Thing. I don't think it has a thing like, like Vine did, where it was like, oh, I'm just gonna make a Vine. Like I, I guess it's TikTok. I'm gonna make a TikTok. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, yeah. So find us on those social medias. Thanks everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>